it's Lindsay here with Pilates On Demand. Welcome to Pilates Laying Down. All you're gonna need is yourself and your mat. And we're going to get started laying down on our back, which will be there pretty much the whole class. <laughs> and on our side and on our belly, all sorts of laying down. So let's get comfortable. Place your feet at a three quarter bend, parallel hips distance, and press the whole foot down into the mat. Open up the fronts of the shoulders, so the bony part of the shoulder, roll it off the chest. And then we're going to do two warm-up moves, one for the neck, one for the legs. So what I would like you to do here is gently look down your nose and tilt your chin towards your chest, lengthening the back of your neck. And then we'll do the reverse action. So we'll look all the way overhead. Just let the back of the head glide against the floor. Good, so as you take an exhale, tilt your chin down. Look down with your eyes and reach the base of your neck behind you. And then inhale, look back, and you can feel that the back of the neck compresses here. So what I actually want to really work on here is this one, where you look down, nose, chin, towards the knees, but we're gliding the head down rather than pushing the head into the floor. So we don't want to create pressure in the neck. We're trying to create length through the vertebra. So this is the one we actually don't want right here when we're looking back behind us and we're clenching the vertebra. We do want the lift of the neck. So gently glide your gaze, your nose, your chin towards your knees and think of your ears being pointy like elf ears and they're reaching back behind you just to kind of give the neck a little traction. Okay, so we'll maintain that position for any time that we're laying down today. Gaze gently down the nose, long back of the neck. And then this next move, it's definitely easy, but it's to warm up the hamstrings isometrically. So with the feet planted, drag the feet towards you, squeeze the back of the leg, and then slide them back out, all the way until the whole foot still stays planted, and then pull the legs to you. Okay, so let's just grind them out on the inhale, and then exhale, push and pull towards you. So let's go through three more of these. So what this action is teaching you is to contract the hamstring. When we go into a bridge, oftentimes people push down and out, like the foot's going to slide away from us like we just did. What I want you to do is push down into the floor and pull in towards your body. So right here we glide out. That's not necessarily what we want. We want to pull in. Pull in, stamp the foot into the floor. Okay, land with your heels right below your knees. We're parallel hips distance. The back of the neck is long, and let's find a little neutral in the spine, so the tailbone tilts into the floor. As you exhale, pull your feet energetically to you to lift your hips, and then lower your hips back down. So as the feet push in the, into the floor, they're also pulling towards the back of the body. Okay, working with the breath. Breathe out to lift. Breathe in to lower. Turning on the back of the legs, really finding the work of the hamstrings here. Now, if you naturally turn out, I see this a lot in dancers, where you're on the edge of the feet or the knees are flopping out, think of hugging inwards. You do not have to hold a ball between your knees or have your knees pressing in to get your inner thighs to work. Yeah? Simply think of the inner thighs rolling down and the outer thighs, the hip bones, pointing straight up. Okay, let's just find a little bit more tempo here, but always pausing at the top for that isometric squeeze in the glutes. <sighs> Working into our Pilates breathing, finding an audible exhale through the mouth on the way up, and an audible inhale through the nose on the way down. So it sounds like a ha breath, and then kind of like a sniff. Got a couple more right here. And just going over what we worked with from the start, all of those cues, and see what you need to apply for yourself. Where are you a little weak? What are your imbalances? 
Where do you kind of like to hang out? Find your work. So we are standing equally on all parts of the feet. We're pulling the feet to us as we press down into the feet and lift the hips. Good, at the top, we're narrowing those glutes and squeezing them together. And the back is moving in one piece up and down without changing any shape. And the base of the skull is nice and long. So the neck is lifted off the floor and the head is light. Okay, let's find five more right here. For five, okay, maybe even close your eyes. Connect to the back of the legs. Four, good, working deep right here for three. Good work guys, keep it up. And two, okay, this next one, stay up there, stay lifted. Hips will stay completely still to the best of your ability. Now slide out and in the right foot, just like we started. So the right leg slides out. Now push and pull it into the floor. Same thing, right leg slides out, push down into the foot and then drag it to you. Inhale out, exhale in. It's okay if the foot stutters a little bit, it's okay. The foot should be light on the way out. Yeah, we're looking for that pulling action to connect to the back of the leg. Okay, now since we have more weight in the left foot, really drive down through the left foot so the pelvis doesn't drop. And then be careful of leaning too much weight into your neck. It should be on your upper back. So you don't wanna be so high lifted here that it puts pressure in your neck. Yeah, a glute bridge is to engage your butt, not to jam into that low back. So just be careful about actually going too high. That's not necessarily helpful. Inhale, glide it out. Exhale, squeeze it in. I think we're gonna feel this tomorrow. <laughs> Give me a couple more. Both legs are working. Left leg stabilizing. Now really push that left foot down. Work the left side at the same time. Let's go for five. And four. Inhale out. Exhale in for three. And two, one more. Drag that right foot in, firmly plant the heel underneath the knee and lift the pelvis. The right side is anchored, the left side glides. Inhale, it slides out, push down to pull in. Like you're dragging your foot through wet cement. Good, you create the intensity. Good, inhale out. Exhale and take a little peek down the nose to keep the length of the neck. And check the form of the hips. Good, breathe in, we glide out. Stamp the big toe, pinky toe, and the heel into the floor. Find all three corners. <sighs> Let's listen to the breath. Inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth. Good work, that's it. Good, push and pull. Slide lightly on the way out. We're here for five. And four. For three. Good, let's work really deep for the last two. For two, one more, four, one, and place the hips down. Really nice, guys. Moving into an imprint spine, so I'll slightly tilt my hip bones towards my chest and press my low back down by drawing my navel in. Bring the legs up to tabletop, parallel hips distance, and let's flex the feet. So we're going to do some variation of the series of five and a couple other things here with some wrist stretches. So reach the arms straight up above the shoulders and flex the palm. Heel up like you have a wine glass on your palm and you're balancing it. Spread the palm. Now as you push through the heel of the hand, 
sink the rib cage into the floor. So opposition, palms up, ribs down, bird dog. Right arm reaches overhead as the left heel dips to the floor. Exhale, return. Alternate sides. Left arm, right leg. Now I'll only take my hand as far overhead as I do not lift my back ribs. So keep that connection the entire time. It's fine if it's right here. The range of motion going super big, if you're not able to keep the form, will not help you get any stronger. So just be honest with yourself and work with your level, wherever you're at. And you know what, some days it can be different than others. Some days we have a nice strong day and some days we just need to take it easy. And you really just have to listen to that. That allows us to be more consistent in our workouts. You know, know when to push, know when to back off. Good, and when we know when to back off, it helps us keep moving. Because if we're pushing too hard, sometimes that, that wants us, that kind of makes us give up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Respect the energy. Okay, last two. This is a build, so don't worry if this isn't hard for you yet. <laughs> Okay, both arms, both legs. We stay parallel hips distance and shoulder distance in the arms. So the heels dip, palms and the heels are flexed. Hug the abs to the mat and exhale, return slowly. Inhale, we separate. Exhale, abdominals down, we return. Okay, working the Pilates breath. Inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth. Okay, the belly button stays tight as we breathe. The breathing is in the ribs. Good, inhale, abs down. Exhale, ribs down. Let's go for three more here till we progress. Starting to find a little shake for three. And two. Last one. Four, one. Legs to tabletop. Spin the fingers to point towards the bottom of the mat, thumb on the outside. Continue to flex the palm and spread the fingers. Push up, pull the ribs down. Arms will stay still. Reach your right leg long and low to 45 degrees. Hold the abs down and then exhale, return. Send the left leg long and low to your lowest point that you can maintain. The ribs pulling down, the belly pulling down, and we return. So the work is actually right here. The longer you can keep that leg out and low, the more of the ab shake you're going to find. So that's why rushing or doing tons of reps isn't necessarily going to be, you know, the huge win in your strength game here. Working deep core. And having that energetic opposition. Palms push up as the rib cage pulls down. And if that's hard for you to imagine, just close your eyes and imagine you're trying to push 10 pound dumbbells up with each palm. A little improv in your Pilates class. Inhale, we take it out. Exhale, we pull it in. So we're stretching the inner wrist the forearm, the bicep, the fingers, and you should almost start to feel a contraction in the outer forearm. Okay, last two. Last one. Hold the legs parallel hips distance, feet flex. Turn your hands so the palms are down and the fingers point towards your knees. Straight, strong arms like poles. Point the fingers down. We're getting the wrist stretch now on the outside of the arm, both legs. Pull the rib cage in, send the legs out. Hold, and exhale back in. Like a leg press, but for your abs. <laughs> Inhale out. Exhale in. Inhale, the ribs expand. Exhale, the ribs narrow. Now let's see if we can work one of our warm-up moves where we did that slight tilt of the chin down, gaze down the tip of the nose, 
and we find a little bit more length in the neck. But remembering it's not about the pressure of the head into the floor. The head should still be nice and light. It's trying to create more length between the base of the skull, the occipital bone, and the top of the upper back. Breathe in, lengthen. Breathe out, return. Keep the arms active. I know it might feel a little silly, but we're getting myofascial stretching Why we're strengthening our abs. And that makes me super excited. <laughs> okay, give me three more. For three. And this neck lengthening is to keep the work out of the neck, right? We want this in the abs. Oh, I thought I saw a spider, but it was a shadow. Okay, let's do two more. <laughs> last two. Okay, guys, last one. We are progressing again. Now, straight legs to the ceiling, one leg at a time. Bend your elbows and bring your fists together. Now, when we bend and extend the arms like a push up, Try not to let the wrists separate. So keep the wrists sealed together. This is an outer wrist forearm stretch. Lower your right leg down as you press the arms to the ceiling, and then bend the elbows as you lift the right leg up. So we'll alternate. Left leg down, press the back of the hand to the ceiling, and then lift. Now what we'll find here is that you probably won't be able to straighten your arms. Yeah, I can go a little bit further, but they're definitely not straight because if your hand starts to open up like that, you're not doing the stretch correctly and then you're losing form, right? <laughs> so you'll get be a better stretch and more out of it if you really try to keep your fist clenched and together. And that's a little coordination, so good for your brain. Breathe in as the arms go up, the leg goes down. Breathe out. So when I push the back of the hands to the ceiling, the rib cage presses into the floor. So you still have that opposing ribs, palm action. Nice work, guys. Let's go for a couple more here. I'll get that navel down into the low back. And maybe we're ready for that one inch hover. We're really close to the floor, just floating it off the ground. Yeah, and maybe you start to extend the hold of the leg at the bottom. Yeah, if we can hang out for a couple seconds. Get that quiver. Okay, let's go for five more. For five. And four. For three. And two. Last one for one. Okay, legs straight up, hips distance in parallel, feet flexed. Palms up, flex the palms, and then turn the fingers towards the knees. We did this one earlier. Push the palms up, hug the ribs down. Inhale, lower the legs as low as you can go without arching the back, right? So pull that back to the mat, and then exhale to lift. Inhale, lower. See if you can push the palms up more and pull the ribs down more at the bottom. And exhale, lift. We're liking these holds. Well, today, <laughs> inhale, lower, hold, push, pull, and lift. Good. A couple more right here. <sighs> nice work, guys and melt the shoulders down off the neck. We're really finding that length. <sighs> Let's find our last two. <sighs> and we're coming into one more after this in the series. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Internal rotation, toes, knees, thighs point in. This happens from the top of the hip but you see it more in the foot. But just so you know, try not to just turn the feet. The whole leg is spinning in the hip socket and this allows us to get some hip mobility work. Arms up to the sky, flex the palms to point overhead and slide your traps down right here. When I reach my arms overhead for this one, 
I will not go any further when this lift starts to happen. So this area, that armpit muscle, stays pulled down when I reach overhead. That's about my stopping point. Okay, so legs internally rotated, back on the mat, inhale, we separate. That's about my stopping point, push through the heel of the hands, pull the ribs and shoulders down. Exhale, we lift. Okay, rather than this guy. <laughs> that doesn't look very cute. It's not very effective. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Inhale, separate. Get the shoulders and the ribs down. Exhale, wrap the ribs around the spine, return. <sighs> Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> okay, see if we can find that length in the neck. I definitely just gave myself a self-correction. <laughs> Couple more right here. Inhale, elongate through the back body. Tailbone reaches to the bottom of the mat, head to the top of the mat, and cinch through the front line of the body, bringing the torsos, areas upper and lower torso, together. Good, so crown of the head, heels move apart as we hold on to that abdominal crunch. You do not have to necessarily lift your chest up to feel a crunching action. Okay, last three. Good, and two. Okay, let's take a hold for fun to finish the abs. So legs low, turn them in, reach the arms overhead, and plug the shoulders and the ribs down. Okay, smile for me. Lengthen the neck, we're here for 10. Nine, firm this area into the floor like I'm pushing down right here on you. Last eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo, bring it up. Give the knees a little squeeze. Good work, guys. Okay, we're moving into some sideline booty. So let's roll it over and start here on the left side. Now we will be using our neck muscles, the side of our neck, and it will be hovered off the floor. Your head's going to be up. So if that's not an option for you, grab a pillow or Pilates ball or block so you can rest your head down. You'll be able to do everything else. So we're over here on the left side. Slide those hips back. And if you can, see if you can reach your legs all the way in front of your hips. Not an option, they just go down a little bit lower. But we're going for somewhat of kind of like an L shape in the body. Okay, straighten your left arm, make a fist, and pull the shoulder down, and then lay on the back of the left arm. Extend the right arm over top to, to match it, and now push the floor away from you with this bottom arm. That's going to help us lift up through this left oblique. Okay, the head is relaxed. And it's not down here like this. So think about the back of your head and your tailbone lining up. Brace your arms, brace your core, flex your feet, and lift your top leg up to a hover. The bottom leg, we're on the pinky toe side of the left foot, and the thigh is pushing against the floor. So my left arm, left thigh are helping me lift up. Okay, both feet are flexed. Let's sweep the right leg back in space, and then sweep it back in line with the hip. Okay, gaze straight out in front of you. Now this position is letting us know if we have been using our leg or if we have been using our low back or our core. So as we move the leg, there should not be a lift and lower of the left waistline. And holding this brace position is going to help us not slouch that belly. Inhale forward, exhale sweep back through that glute. Okay, connect to the back of the leg here. We're here for five, staying at the same height in that right leg for four. Good work, guys. For three. And two. Last one. For one, moving into a circle. Same thing, hip height we come forward, then we lift up and over, take it down and around. So the circle will only be as big as there's no movement in the upper body. Okay, I'm staying pretty parallel in both of my legs the whole time to the best of my ability. Breathing in as we lift, 
and out as we lower. This is definitely strength for the lateral neck muscles. You can always take a break. You know, I know a lot of people don't like when they feel their hip flexors or their neck, but it is important to strengthen them. Last one in this direction, but know your limit. Know where you need to go. Okay, now we'll reverse it. So sweep the right leg back, lift up and over. So you'll feel when you're, the back of your leg kind of catches without allowing the hips to move, then we lift and return. Good, continue to press out of the floor with the back of the left arm and the outer edge of the left foot and thigh. Good, last three. And two. Last one, four, one. Sweep your right leg to the front right corner and turn it out. Point the toe. Lift your leg up on the right diagonal, only as high as we don't dump. This will stay lifted. And flex to lower. Good. Point to lift and flex to lower. Reach the right leg out of the body. Good. We've got seven more for seven. Straighten your knee by firming that right quad for six and five for four good work guys and three almost there for two last one four one Good, float it down. Okay, press up to a C. We're gonna take a little stretch for the neck. So drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Bring your left hand to that right ear and just gently pull. Reach the right arm out and flex the fingers back. Look down towards the left knee and gently pull the chin into the chest. As you drive out through that right palm. Good. Okay guys, let's do the other side. So come to lay over. I'm just gonna move the mic. Come to lay over on the right. So straighten that right arm, slide the shoulder down. The back of the arm pushes into the floor and move your hips back. See how far forward you can bring your feet, trying to get them in line with your hips. Match your top arm to your bottom arm and then as if you're trying to like break a rubber band apart, push the arms apart. That will help us lift that right oblique. And the neck is lifted, right? In line with the head, so not so high up that we crunch the side of the neck. So one line from the base of the head to the tailbone, and here we go. Float your top leg up as you push against the floor with your left arm, your right arm, right leg. We're going to sweep the right leg back, squeeze the glute, and sweep the leg forward. Okay, so we want no movement in the hips and no movement in the ribs. Bottom ribs are lifting off the floor. You can already feel that this leg has a harder time stabilizing and maybe you feel stronger on one side or the other and that's what such a big benefit of doing single-sided work is. Good, push the back of the arm into the ground. Seriously, <laughs> like you're mad at it. Sweep back. And forward. Good, we've got four more right here for four. Good, I know we're on our side now, but have that imagery of nose slightly down, lengthening the back of the neck like we did when we were flat on the mat. Okay, two more, then we circle it up. Last two. One more. Last one. Okay, as the leg travels forward, now we'll lift the leg, circle around and down. Rather than matching the same circle size on the last side as this side, just see where you're able to keep stability. That's where I want you to stay. Good. Inhale up, exhale down. Good, we've got three. And two, 
Last one. Okay, let's reverse it. At hip height, sweep the leg back. Lift without the bottom ribs dropping and circle around. Really resisting slouching through the right side. Good, let's go four more for four. And three. For two. Last one. Four, one. Sweep the left leg to the front left corner and turn the leg out. But the hip will not roll back and the ribs are still lifted. Point the toe, lift the leg and flex to lower. Now as I'm lifting my leg, I'm pushing harder against the floor to help stabilize so that my right side doesn't rest. Good. Imagine someone's holding your left ankle and trying to pull the leg out of your body. So we create a lot of length on the top waistline. Good work guys, we're here for six. Good, hold on to or strengthening the neck at the same time for five. And four. For three. And two. Last one. Four. One. And take a rest. Woo, that side was a lot harder for me to stabilize, but the other side was a lot harder for my neck. <laughs> so come to a seat. Let's take a little stretch right here. Sit crisscross applesauce for me. And let's take the head and drop it over to the right. Take that right hand over top and just gently pull. Reach the left arm out and flex the fingers back. Reach your ear and your left palm apart. Then chin down towards that right knee and just gently press your head into your chest. Good, and then roll it up. Okay guys, we're coming to laying down on our stomach in something I'd like to call a baby plank. So the position of the arms will look like this. Elbows are slightly out. We're making a diamond with the hands. And I want you to imagine you're trying to push the floor apart, but your arms are not moving. Remember, it's an energetic action. So flip it on over. Let's find that position of the arms. So tripod position. Slightly angle the elbows out to the back corners of the mat. Make a triangle with your pointer finger and your thumb, and then lay down on your belly for a second. The left leg will be long and straight with the kneecap down, and we'll turn the right knee out just a little bit. So the knee is not all the way up in line with the hip, but more so reaching back towards the back right corner. Now scoop the pelvis, kick the inside of the right knee and ankle down as you push the floor apart with your arms and lift your pelvis up. Good, try to spread the upper back so that your chest can pull up. And then gazing slightly forward, lengthening the back of the neck. Good, you should feel a quiver in the core right here. Really try to push the elbows out, spread the muscles to the back of the armpit, lift the ribs, lift the navel. Let's hold on to it, you're here for 10, nine, eight, good work, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it down, nice job. Okay, so, so you have the idea of the other side. Right leg is long, left leg is just slightly turned out. Arms are in the same position. Press down through the inner left knee, left ankle. Kick the top of the right knee, right foot into the floor, lift. Curl the tailbone towards the back of the knees. Lift your ribs, lift your chest, and try to drive out with the elbows without letting them actually move. Good, now keep your sternum lifting and gaze forward just slightly. Good, relax the neck and kick against the floor. Apply pressure. Good, let's hold the work, close your eyes. Give it your best. We have 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Float it down. 
Okay, so the next thing we'll do is a lying down push-up to focus on not letting your traps lift when we go into a push-up. So the action is pulling the floor to you, like a sliding action when we lift up into the push-up. So I like a really wide grip with the hands. So wider than your mat, foot and a half apart, spread the palm and turn the fingers out slightly. Okay, knees, hips, distance, heels are up, and scoop the tailbone. Now before you even press out of lying down on your belly, energetically pull the hands down. That it will help slide these muscles down off the neck. That's what we want. Pull the hands down and press up. Neck should be long, and then lower all the way back down to a nice lying down position. Here we go. Breathe out as you slide the hands to the knees, knees to the hands. Breathe in. So it might not be as hard for you as doing a regular push-up. We're just really focusing on what's going on with the traps and your serratus area. Okay, so we're gonna go for eight more of these. So this is more of working on proper alignment and form than being like your hardest variation. I want lots of space in the back of the neck. And every time at the bottom, rest the body weight. Every time at the top, pull the hands and knees together. That should really help activate the core. Give me four more. For four. Good, lengthen the back of the neck like we practice. And three. Nice job, guys. Last two. Last one. And slowly release. Good work. So laying all the way down on the belly, we'll move into a little bit of extension. For this move, I want you to put your hands underneath your belly. So like stack your palms, elbows out to the sides, hands underneath right below your belly button, right above the pubic bone in between those two points. Now reach your tailbone to the floor towards your heels back behind you and lift your core up off your hands, even if it's still touching your hands. You feel your hands, pull your abs away from that. So when you go up into your chest lift, do not let your belly release and relax. That's what the hands are for, okay? So let's lower the head down. We've got a long neck. Reach the low back to the heels behind you and lift your abdomen. Now only lift up as high in your chest lift as your abdomen does not drop down. It should be pretty small. And then exhale lower. <sighs> Inhale lift. Hold and lift your abdomen away from your hands. Lift, lift, lift. And lower. Couple more. As the chest lifts, this should create a bend right at the mid back and keep any tension out of the low back. Lift the core and lower. Imagine you're doing abs right now. Chest goes up, abs pull up. Pubic bone presses down and lower. Let's do four more. We lift. Good, find the lift of the core and lower. Last three. Inhale, lift. Pull the abs away from the hands. Exhale, lower. Lift the chest, but not the ribs. The ribs should stay down and the abs should lift up. Good, last one. Lift and hold. Good, work the form. Long low back, abdomen up, off the hands. Rib cage close, chest just hovering, lengthening the back of the neck, reaching the ears, overhead, and then gently release. Okay, guys, press it up. Super form focus, and we'll lay down on our back and move into a pelvic curl, so some spinal articulation. Feet are going planted, hips distance parallel. We'll be in a neutral spine to start, so think sits bones into the mat, there's an arch through the lower back, ribs are down. What I wanna focus on for the pelvic curl today is that it's not like a bridge. It's a lot lower of a lift. It's more about the C curve of your back, the movement of the pelvis. A bridge is not about your pelvis moving, it's about keeping your pelvis in the same position. 
A pelvic curl is very different. So I'm gonna put my arms a little bit out of the way so you have a good view of my back, but you have your arms right by your waist with your chest open. So we'll start, glutes are heavy, and then the belly button comes into play as we exhale. <sighs> Low back touches down. Then we start to lift one bone at a time, but almost like we're resisting the next bone lifting. That's what creates the stretch. Press the ribs down and together, and this will be your stopping point. So we're not gonna come up so high that now we're in a bridge. This isn't the flexibility, right? That's the stability. So rib cage down, and try to think of a reverse crunch action. So like you're pulling your suspenders up, pull your hip bones towards your ribs, close that space. And then as you start to roll down, maintain the scoop of your back for as long as possible. Bone by bone, we come back to the mat. And that should feel good and stretchy. Rock the pelvis into a neutral, but not to overdo where the ribs lift. Ribs are down, so the pelvis is moving independently of the rib cage. Okay, feel your back ribs on the mat. Breathe out. <sighs> Low back touches the floor. Then you'll start to peel up the tailbone lifts and think of each individual bone in your back lifting off the floor. So doing this slower is going to give you a bigger stretch. Okay, at the top, you should still feel that mid-back area on the floor. See if you can deepen your pelvic curl by drawing your hip bones towards your chest. Then as you start to lower back down, keep that action. Bone by bone, the back returns to the mat. So let's add on to this. Reach your arms overhead, flex your fingers, and point your fingers straight down. Push out through your palms as if you're driving them into a wall and plug your shoulders and ribs down. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, press the low back into the floor. <sighs> Peeling up, taking your time, bone by bone. Hold at the top. Exhale deeply, hug the ribs into the mat and then start to stretch your spine back down as you push harder through the heels of the hands. Bone by bone. Inhale, lengthen the tailbone, lengthen the base of the neck. Exhale, peel the spine up, we lift. Bone by bone. Good, coming just to the point that the rib cage is still down and then seeing if there's space to deepen the tuck. Drive the arms out straight like poles and we lower back down, bone by bone. Inhale at the bottom. One more right here. Exhale. Gather the ribs together in the front body and feel the pressure we're creating in the core. We're pulling the rib cage into the floor, right here, as if someone's gently pushing your ribs down, or maybe firmly pushing your ribs down. And then bone by bone, melt the spine back down. Lengthen to neutral, and release the arms. Okay, send the right leg straight up to the sky and hold a lot lower than you usually would. So wrap your hands around your thigh. Flex your right leg, tighten your quad muscle, this guy, and that's how you're going to straighten the knee. Not from thinking of your knee just pushing back. That will be the joint and will probably irritate it over time. So squeeze your thigh and push your thigh away from you. So not focusing on the leg coming to you. Get the leg straight. Once your leg is straight, I want you to try to press your glutes down so that lumbar spine curve lifts. And you can slide a hand there. Now hold the pressure. Thigh out, lumbar spine slightly lifted, ribs down, and see if you can spread your shoulders and press your upper back onto the floor. Okay, my right leg is shaking. That just shows you that I'm truly working, right? <laughs> okay, let's take three breaths here and hold the form. So this is active stretching. It's not just chilling, holding the leg. Squeeze the quad. One more breath in. And breathe out. Bend the right knee, plant the foot down. See if you can keep that natural curve as we reach the left leg up, flex the foot. La la lace, <laughs> lap the hands, lace the hands behind the back of the left leg. Now use the strength of your quad, firm it and push out. Okay, this side's definitely a little bit more iffy for me. And I also have a little bit of a hip hike. 
So I have to think of the left hip, outer hip moving down away from my left armpit. Okay, so tailbone heavy, low back has the curve, ribs pull down, and see if I can spread my collarbone and move my shoulder blades into the floor. Good, find the work, push the thigh out. And this is an isometric quad exercise. Good, let's find three breaths here. Breathe in, breathe out. Last two. One more. And gently release. Okay, shimmy your hips a little bit over to the left. Extend the right leg long, bend the left knee, and cross it over top your body to the right. Hold on to the left knee with the right hand, just gently pulling it to the floor. And if you'd like to add on, bend your bottom knee, the right knee, and grab it with your left hand. Now roll the left shoulder head off the chest and start to twist your body to the left. Use your right arm to push into the floor and turn the waist more. So I lifted my back and I turned my ribs and that really assisted me getting the left shoulder blade onto the ground. And slide the left hip crease away from you and press your chest up towards your chin chin towards the chest. Let's take a big breath in and a deep breath out. And gently release the twist. Okay, coming through center, just slide the hips to the right. Left leg is straight. Bring the right knee into the chest. Take it across the body and grab the outer right knee with the left hand. You may or may not get an adjustment here. I just did on this side. <laughs> then the left leg, Heel can come in. This is a second option. You don't have to take this. Grab it with the right hand. Good. Lengthen this hip. Right hip moves away from the ribs. And then pushing into the back of my left arm. I'm lifting my back and turning my back to the right. Rolling that right shoulder blade towards the floor as much as I can. And lengthening the lower half of my body down and the crown of my head and chest up. I take a couple breaths here into this twist. And relaxing the mind and the body. We did a lot today. Good. One more big breath in. And a deep breath out. Release the legs. And as you're ready, roll up to a seat. Okay, let's just give ourselves a hand. That was an awesome job. Loved lying down with you for our Pilates class today. It's always surprising, right? You think laying down would be easy, but I think we all worked up a sweat. So thanks for joining me for today's Pilates class. My name is Lindsay Bushman. This is Pilates On Demand. I hope to see you here on the channel again, so please subscribe. It's completely free. It'll just let you know when I have a new workout video out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.